Hello and welcome to Home Screen. Today I'm delighted to be chatting to Yani Kalunin, the Senior Product Manager at Free Trade. We'll be talking about how things have progressed over the last year, where things are moving, um, and we'll also be delving into some features such as fractional buying, setting a limit order, and weighted rate of return. Yanni, um, welcome to Home Screen again. Um, it's, uh, I think you're our first return guest, um, so uh, we're really delighted to have you back on. Um, Thanks for having me. No, no, no not, not at all. Um, uh, how are you doing? Yeah, doing very well, thank you. Um, you know, times have changed slightly since uh, our last encounter, but yeah. otherwise, all good. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we were just saying off camera, um, we can promise we weren't trying to synchronize our clothing and background, that's just completely natural. Um, so um, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what free trade does um, uh, on the whole and, and um, kind of where they're moving? Sure. So uh, free trade is a challenger stockbroker, basically trying to democratize uh, investing and bring that to everyone. We want to make investing accessible and we want everyone to be investing because it is something that is a powerful tool and we want to help people find their financial well-being. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and um, where do you operate currently? So currently at home, but uh, in London, Aldgate East is our, our headquarters and we basically just operate in the UK. Uh, as it is, we have some beta users in uh, other countries in Europe and mm. we are looking to expand, but currently the main operations are in, in London and in the UK. Okay, great. Um, and um, in terms of the competition, um, what, what, what's the, uh, what are the other competitors we're looking at in, in the uh, UK landscape? So when we think about competitors, we're really um, benchmarking ourselves against the established players. So listed players uh, like Hargreaves Lansdowne, AJ Bell, because obviously they've gotten something right in the previous years. And what we're really trying to do is come to the same standard as they are, but taking the user experience and really bring that new product thinking for the likes of uh, Airbnb or Uber and those kind of mobile apps that you already have access to and make sure that that user experience is at the same standard as as what you'd expect rather than just an incumbent uh, or older style, um, basically um, app. Yeah, for sure. Um, and um, in terms of um, how, how you um, got got into free trade in the first place. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your story and, and uh, how you arrived here? So it's a, it's a funny story, I, I guess. Um, I was an early investor in, in free trade itself. So obviously free trade's known for their crowdfunding rounds. And I invested before I even talked to anyone. I found it a very cool concept and something that was really needed in the UK uh, and Europe in general. And after investing, I really started following the journey and got talking to, to Victor and Adam, the co-founders of the company, and noticed that there was a product position open. So I then interviewed uh, my first call with, with Victor and just kind of relayed what, what I thought about the company, what I've been doing so far, and uh, it really clicked and basically joined us the first product manager of uh, Free Trade. Okay, great. And uh, what was the, um, the size of the team at that point? So. I believe when I signed my contract, we were about 13 people. And okay. right now we're uh, probably misquoting some numbers, but roughly at around 80 people in the office. Okay, great. Um, and I think um, when you were last on um, home screen, you're were, you were around 40. Um, so it seems that it's just uh, continuous growth there, which is great. Yeah, definitely. And it's not just uh, growth for, for the team size, but it's also lots of customers, new customers, and we're really uh, seeing it come to life. Yeah. Um, so, so, so you mentioned um, how an important part of um, the proposition is um, kind of democratizing the access to investments and making it accessible for everyone. Um, how does uh, free trade in particular going about doing this? Um, so we believe that everyone should be taking an active interest in their personal finances and dedicating some time to investing uh, their money. After all, everyone invests even when you're putting money into your savings account for example um, and we're really focused on building products and service around that 
that that will help people to understand in simple steps what they can be doing uh, to take charge of their investments and finances and start to meet those financial goals. And some of the things that are obvious is that there's no large charge when you're placing a trade. It's a simple step forward, but also, like I mentioned with the user experience, we're really bringing that to um, to the likes of the, the big tech companies and really trying to make that an accessible journey. And, and obviously education is also a big part of that. Right. So it's about um, ease of use as well as informing them about the decisions they're making. Exactly. So it is a collaboration between the two because just making something easier doesn't mean that it, you're going to be um, a rock star investor or it's going to be good for you, but it's really important to make sure that we also give the tools to educate yourself and, and give you that kind of information on how to start investing. What are the first kind of principles investing, how to diversify uh, your portfolio and your investments and, and even what proportion of your kind of finances you should be putting into, uh, into investments and, and along what paths. Do you have your own team that works on that educational aspect or do you kind of outsource it from um, tried and tested um, kind of documentation that, that um, talks about these kind of issues and, and best ways to approach them? So we have our own team that puts it together. We have a content team that uh, puts together the educational content mm -hmm. and we've actually launched an uh, educational hub for investing mm -hmm. uh, recently. And basically, obviously there are certain things that have come from uh, other platforms or other theories or or educational kind of content that we haven't put together. But what we're trying to do is make that digestible and easy to understand because there's a lot of financial jargon and a lot of terms that you might not know, but it's more about understanding the depth and, and the importance of what's actually the underlying information rather than just throwing around terms uh, for the sake of that. So we try to bring that to the average people and really try to make sure that people understand what we're, what we're um, trying to educate them about and what investing is truly about. It's a really interesting balance, the one between um, um, making great UX, as you mentioned before, um, whilst also flagging things up, educating them along the way because they are making um, quite big, big decisions. Um, so that's a, that's a very interesting balance. And I, I think one that you're getting right. Um, in terms of um, the kind of demographic that you're aiming for, or that you um, that you've got there, um, what are we seeing here? The demographic is still largely um, young adults and who've started their careers. So I think majority of our customers fall into the bucket of 26 to 35. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are seeing a lot of older users as well as younger users who are either putting more or less of their money into it, and we are trying to diversify that as well. So not just bringing you know, uh, those 26 year olds into the app, but also trying to bring products that can be used along the way of you, know, you building your financial well-being up to your retirement and, and building your pension. So uh, majority still in that 26 to 35, but it is a diverse group of people that we have on our platform. And in terms of um, the behavior of your users and, and uh, um, since, since uh, I suppose six months ago, since uh, lockdown started, um, um, what's been um, what's been the observations there? Um, anything surprising there? So we have seen a, definitely a significant uptick in activity this year, uh, partly due to the lockdown, having more time to spend and educate yourself, but also we believe that it also stems from uh, the market volatility that we've been experiencing recently. And investors are viewing this as a significant buying opportunity after, you know, having a relatively steady bull market across most global markets mm -hmm. uh, up until March. And now um, the markets have become more volatile. So people are seeing that there is an opportunity to buy. And just as a testament to that, um, we've now got about 225,000 customers on our platform, which is roughly 90% growth since the start of April. Uh, so huge growth on, on our platform in terms of customers. Mm -hmm. We've ranked as the largest or second largest uh, retail broker by the LSC. Mm -hmm. And we've also seen the average portfolio size grow from less than a thousand pounds at the start of the year to well over 2000 now. So wow. we've seen that people are really putting money into their investments and, and trying to educate themselves on, on what to put money into and also see the opportunity in the market. You, you recently um, announced a partnership um, with TrueLayer, I believe. Um, what's, um, 
What was the purpose of this um, and what were you going to see off the back of it? So the purpose comes from uh, building a, a better topping up experience or funding your account experience, but it's an exciting and central uh, development for a product that is already streamlining the funding process for our customers. So one, TrueLayer's ambitions and plans align with ours uh, really well in terms of the products that they're offering and growing into, as well as the markets that they're looking to grow into, uh, which is similar to ours. And as we continue to develop the integration, we will be able to offer a, a more seamless and ultimately quicker funding experience. Uh, so far, you've seen a much quicker and seamless experience within the app and, and kind of bouncing around your your own uh, banking app as well as our app. But also in the future, that means that we'll be able to quicken the, the actual time to get that in, uh, top up into your account. Um, and also just enables us to do a lot more with open banking, mm -hmm. uh, we hope in the future. So we are building an app with UX at the heart of it yeah. and asking our users to copy across beneficiary details into their banking app uh, to top up their accounts felt very archaic and yeah. we knew that this had to be changed. So uh, open banking and TrueLayer really made it possible to make that a seamless experience um, so far. Okay, great. And, and that's, um, is that a priority on the roadmap then? Um, making that easier for our, our customers has been, but also there's another side of it, which is our own operational side. So when you give a certain amount of kind of room for, for mistakes, uh, it happens that people might send their top up into our account, but not copy their reference number, for example, which causes us some operational um, delays, which causes a, an even longer delay between topping up your account. And what this open banking uh, integration does, it really streamlines that for the operational side as well. So we can make sure that those reference codes and the names and the, all the numbers are copied correctly over to your banking app. So uh, not only is it a better experience for our users, but it also makes sure that our operational um, operations are quicker. It's more streamlined on our side. And by that, we can give a better experience for, for our users. For sure. Uh, and in turn, um, that, that will likely lead to um, more investments being made. There'll be less drop off. Um, people won't get fed up if they do at all. And then they'll, um, they might make that investment that they otherwise wouldn't. Um, so that exactly. seems like a very wise um, move there. Um, um, yeah, last time um, you were on home screen, um, uh, we went through the onboarding flow, uh, my colleague Jim did and, and yourself. Um, and uh, there was a big emphasis there on, on intercom. Um, I think it was the first thing you see once you've actually gone through um, or you're in, or on a waiting screen. Um, is that is customer support still um, at the heart of the product? So customer support is still at the heart of the product. I think it's no longer such a big player as it used to be because we have been building this educational content uh, and we are building it into the app uh, as a player, but we do see that you know, one-to-one -one support from our customer operations staff can come in crucial and sometimes you just need to ask those questions and we want to make sure that we're uh, best of class in that. And as a testament to that, um, we've also recently announced uh, our Free Trade Plus uh, offering, which will include um, longer customer support hours. So whether you're investing in the evening or placing a, a limit order on the weekend or what that might be, you'll have access to that support uh, when need with that Free Trade Plus, which we'll talk about soon. Okay, great. Um, yeah, uh, and um, I think as well, you, you mentioned how how your user base is, has been growing rapidly. Um, it's very hard to keep that level of um, uh, intercom kind of w when you've got um, a agent right there, if you've got hundreds and thousands of users asking queries. Um, so to manage that, have you been able to kind of um, lead them through initial um, questions so they don't necessarily have to to reach the the agent so yeah we, we've always tried to make that as seamless as possible whether it's an easier answer that we know that we can have an answer to uh, we'll try to surface that content as quickly as possible without necessarily uh, having a support agent be there uh, for that support uh, and as I mentioned we're also building that educational content into the app directly so not just via our intercom partner but um, we have streamlined some of those experiences and, and really creating that content 
on our side as well as on the customer side to make that as seamless as possible and to support any kind of questions that you might ask, uh, especially while we're growing our feature feature list and, and ability to do more with our um, with our app. For sure. Um, and, and that's something that we've seen from some of the best apps and platforms is is that combination of the support hub. Um, and then if you really can't find what you're looking for, we're at hand, but let's make sure that you've got everything you need in the meantime. Um, exactly. So that's great to see. Um, so I think we're ready to um, jump into our first journey, um, which is um, fractional buy. We can see here we've got some Tesla shares, very clear buy CTA there, and a watch list option as well. We can see our available balance there, which as we enter the figures will change dynamically. And we can also see the number of shares. 25 pounds there, quick overview. Base ID to confirm and authorize. Familiar, nice loading animation there. And we get right the way through in a very seamless flow. So that was a very, very quick way to um, buy some Tesla shares. Um, obviously we weren't buying the entire share, which um, references the, the, the fractional aspect of it. Um, is, this, is this the most common um, way that people buy shares on free trade? So on free trade, it's, it's increasing a lot um we've seen some trends come up with uh, fractional shares so since we launched our, our fractional product we've seen especially people investing more into us stocks which are known to be pricier than those in the uk or in europe in general so mm -hmm. the likes of amazon for example going at a rate of roughly three thousand dollars not everyone has that kind of money to spend and what we've noticed that now people can diversify their portfolio not just by what they can afford, but however they want to invest. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've seen that a lot of our users have started investing more and more into the US uh, equities uh, through the fractional shares. So seeing the, the latest share price there, um, what's the update time? Um, is it kind of very real time? Um... So basically we, we try to update it as frequently as possible. Uh, we have a roughly two minutes every two minutes we update the price so not quite real time at this moment in time uh but we try to give you a, um, a quick enough um pricing um pipeline but on the other hand we are working on bringing some features that will make that closer and closer to real time it is something that we are currently working on and and it is an active development uh for us to depending on on a pricing partner or the liquidity of the stock the, the stock it can vary so some more illiquid stocks that aren't traded as frequently the pricing might be more delayed because there's just no no uh, later price on that but what we're trying to do is make that as, as seamless as possible and as real time as possible and when we go into the next journeys we'll give you more tools to actually um, control what you get than we've previously had. So there are multiple things that we're doing to give more and more control to our, our users. Okay, great. Um, and um, that was a very quick and seamless flow. Um, what were the uh, kind of key hurdles um, as um, you know leading the product? What was the key hurdles coming over some of those? Um, just getting to that point where it was so seamless. So it's a very interesting project uh, and a feature that we've rolled out because uh, to, to a customer, to a user, it looks very very seamless, very easy, and it's basically just a, a simple screen that allows you to trade uh, fractionals. But in the back end of things, there have been significant developments within our, our platform. So early 2020, we actually rolled out our proprietary brokerage platform uh, called uh, Invest by Free Trade. And this took about a year and a half to build in the background. So we've been building the the brokerage platform for a long time um, but because we launched our product we used a third-party brokerage platform it had its limitations and it, it didn't allow us to do what we wanted to do and we knew from, from the beginning that we wanted to build the best products that we can for our customers so we built this uh, proprietary brokerage platform for us uh, which allows us to do that and after that year and a half of, of work, we were able to integrate with other partners, other, um, for example, uh, market makers that can place trades and allows us to also 
purchase U.S. stocks directly in the U.S. market. Um, and this also allowed us to, to trade fractional shares. And not only did it allow us to trade fractional shares and overcome that kind of a hurdle to provide that, it also allows us to um, more rapidly increase our geographic kind of reach, what other partners we're going to be uh, syncing with and, and really getting into, uh, as well as the speed of development. Now it's all in-house, so this allows us to take control of everything that we're building, which means that all of our features are just quicker to to hit our, our customers and, and really hit the market. And and this these are the kind of things that it allows us to do. And in the future, you'll see much more of, of the control that we've had and we can give to our customers uh, as a result of that. I see. And, and is that a kind of general trend where the, the less you rely on third parties like that, um, the more control and quicker the experience often is on the front end? Uh, it depends on the third party that you might be using because some uh, platforms are using third parties because they they know what they're doing they've been doing it for years and they're quick to build what they are building uh, but because we are an investment platform and the brokerage platform is is the core of our product it really makes a difference when we're in control of that rather than a third party that might not be as quick to develop those features because they're serving other clients as well and uh now we can really dictate how we want to build the features and and listen to our customers to build those features that they want. Absolutely, um, and you can really see the the impact of that. Um, so we're going to jump into the second journey now. So here we are setting a limit order, so we can buy and then select from the drop down the limit order, where we choose what price we'd like to pay at. Again, seeing that latest price there at the bottom. The amount we'd like to invest is entered. Uh, confirmation modal. Base ID once again. Told the likely wait time. And it's much quicker. And uh, we're through to the confirmation screen where we can see the total cost. So um, that was another um, very quick process. Um, and um, I imagine that was relying on some of the same technology you referenced before. Um, but could you just talk us uh, what else is going on going on here? So basically, we've been listening to our customers and, and understanding what their needs are. And um, we've realized that there's more than just placing a trade that our, our users need and want. And as a result of kind of the, the technology that we've been building and um, and the focus on our customers, we wanted to give these tools, such as limit orders, stop losses, um, that gives you a bit more control of either what price you want to place your trade at, as well as just not having to look at the app every single day, yeah. monitoring a price point. So for example, a stop loss will really give you that opportunity to make sure that you don't lose out on, or you don't lose money on something that um, you haven't heard of, maybe you were flying flying somewhere, maybe not this day and age, but you might have been going on holiday and not online and you notice that the stock that you're holding has been uh, tanking or, or trending downwards and you don't want to make a loss above a certain amount. And now with stop loss um, orders, you're able to actually stop that and place that trade so that you don't lose out on, on more than you wish to. Similarly with limit orders, like you saw here, you can kind of look at the, the trends that they're going, make your decisions yourself, make sure that, okay, at this point, I think it's valued at a good point. So I want to place the trade only at this value. So you can set that limit on, on our app. You can set the amount that you want to be investing and then place that trade. And similarly, if you think that maybe there's an announcement like an Apple announcement today, you want to set that if the stock goes above this, this, this uh, price point, you want to set that limit order so that you can get in on the the basically the rush on everyone buying that Apple stock if it comes to that. But you can set that that limit and you can control that yourself. So we really want to give that that kind of control to our users. Yeah. Okay. Great. And, and is, is this available to all users? So um, earlier I mentioned that we've started launching our Free Trade Plus offering 
which is basically a, a subscription model for allowing you to have access to more uh, more features within the app and giving more control. Uh, it's a feature that we're building out or it's a product offering that we're building out as we speak. We right now have a limited amount of uh, our community members and beta testers on, on uh, using limit orders and basically we'll be rolling out Free Trade Plus and the entire offering that, as it stands uh, in the next few few weeks. So it's an interesting uh, subscription that you can uh, upgrade to and then you get all of the controls that you might need. And like I mentioned, it is an ever evolving product. So the features that you might see today on there, uh, you'll probably have many more to give you even more control and insights into your portfolio on how to manage your investing. Uh, as well as educational content. Um, and at this point, I'm going to pry a little bit. Do you, do, you, do you know what those features might be? Um, so the first set of features gives a lot of these uh, limit orders, stop losses. Uh, we've started curating some uh, stock lists. So basically curating content in the app. So um, what it might be interesting um, is that we are actually using our internal kind of content team to manage what you will see. So whether it's, um, you know, green energy stocks or female CEOs, we're, we're kind of curating those um, on an ongoing basis so that you have more access to, to kind of discover stocks that you might otherwise not. Uh, we will be building out other features as well as we go. Uh, we will be adding more stocks as well for, for those. And, um, there will be a lot more features that uh, to come in the, the coming weeks and, and months. Great. Um, and in terms of um, just amongst the beta users that have been uh, using this feature, um, how how is it how have they reacted to it? What's the response been? So I think just as our overall community has been asking for for especially limit limit orders and stop losses, mm -hmm. I think those are very well uh, kind of adopted and and we've gotten very good feedback on those mm -hmm. obviously as we as we're still testing there are some things that we want to improve and, and iterate on but so far the the feedback has been has been positive from our our users okay great um so um yeah i'm gonna go into the third journey now so this is the weighted rate of return um, so we're just on the portfolio now through to insights and we can see the entire portfolio performance there um, up by 30.57% um, and the date that started as well. And we're through to some educational content that's been referenced throughout. Heaps of text to get through, but all legible and digestible. And the, you've got a kind of alphabetized um, kind of list of content there, um, so you can quickly go through it. Um, if you could just quickly talk us through what, what's happened there. This is a new feature that we're actually rolling out right now, uh, which is the money weighted rate of return. Um, it's it's basically one of the, the new features that allows you to understand your portfolio performance much better than previously. Uh, gives you kind of a percentage figure of of your your rate of return and we introduced money rate of return uh, as it takes into consideration all of the, the kind of money movements in and out of your account as well so not only does it give you a rate of return based on your investments but it also looks at the timing of your your top ups it takes into consideration the timing of your withdrawal so really all of your investment choices are are kind of taken into consideration in this in, in this figure and that's one of the first first features that we'll be launching in this section. It is a focus of ours at the moment. Um, and like you can see in the journey, we've linked it to some some educational content, which is one of our first kind of proper places where we've added more and more of that educational content in the app that will be a focus with more of the features to come. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of text uh, and description around that we've especially launching some other features previously, like our gain loss in your portfolio, which is a pound value. But a lot of our users, especially our kind of, uh, long term users and early adopters, they really want to know and understand what goes into that calculation. 
how is that calculated? Why did we choose to use that figure rather than something else? Why is it actually important? So you can see that it's broken down in these bits where you can kind of get an intro into money weighted rate of return, understand a little bit more about it, understand why it's important, why you should be monitoring that figure, and then going into the kind of nitty gritty of how we calculate that for you. So you start understanding the complexities of what's being calculated and and also for you to get get clarity on how we we do that calculation for you so you can either put it into your own excel sheet or whatever it might be but we want to give that transparency and that context to you as well as a user and not just the magical figure that we've calculated somewhere in the back end and towards the back end of that that journey you can see that it links to this uh, sort of dictionary of content uh, in this investment space and that's so we've we've uh, generated two pieces of editorial content. One is this dictionary, which allows you to understand terms and, and kind of the investment um, terminology that's being used when when you might be talking or reading up on, on what you should be doing. So trying to give you a digestible understanding of what money weighted rate of return is, what uh, portfolio balances are and how we calculate them and and kind of giving you more and more information like exchange traded funds what are they why you should be focusing on them as well as a kind of a an invest um investment educational piece where we give you some of those tidbits of of where you should even start what you should be considering when you're starting investing so more of a narrative around it not just a dictionary so those are the two pieces of content that we'll be starting to link out uh, from within the app, they're already accessible through our website. Um, and we'll, you'll see more and more of this content being brought into the app to, to help our, especially our first time, time investors, but also those who are experienced and might want to learn a little bit more about what they're doing and, and something new. Okay, great. Uh, and just focusing on the future itself, it, it's good to see because um, there's, there's certain apps that are investment apps and uh, particularly crypto ones where it takes a while to work out whether you've actually made any money. Um, you've got to kind of go into your library, set, set, go into your portfolio and set date ranges and, and lots of other things. Um, so it's really good to have that oversight um, in, in very clear terms. What, um, is, it, is it kind of rigid there? Can you, can you um, set date ranges or can you, um, are, there, are there any configurations at this point or is that something that's um, not there at the moment? So, like I mentioned, this is the first kind of version that we're rolling out right now. We are actively working on further developing the, the money weighted rate of return uh, feature to include date ranges, for example, like you mentioned, uh, as well as a time weighted rate of return, which is another rate of return figure that takes away those money movements. So, for example, for some users who might not uh, have a choice, they need to withdraw a thousand pounds from their account to pay for a fee that they didn't see coming and it wasn't really their choice so time weighted rate of return takes away those inflows and outflows of, of cash and just focuses on the performance of the, the stocks that you've invested in and the dividends that you're getting paid into um, so that's going to be another figure for you to keep a, an eye on and, and really kind of give that breakdown between the two and we'll also be charting that so you'll see a chart of, of the money uh, of the time weighted rate of return over the period of time, which also will have a time frame, and we'll also be adding a benchmark so that you can not only understand how your portfolio is doing, but how that portfolio is performing against the overall market, for example. So oh, yeah. it's easy to assume that, you know, if you're up by 3%, you're doing better than uh, maybe your standard savings account, but how does that link to the overall market movements? And, and should you maybe be putting your money into ETFs more than picking individual stocks, because as much as we all like to think that we're great uh, pickers of stocks and we think what's the next big thing, sometimes the best thing is to just put into a well diversified fund that can do that work for you. Absolutely. And so would you have, um, looking forward, would you have uh, kind of advice and educational links off the back of where they stand and, and um, um, their sort of, uh, based on their performance, did you, did you would you um, uh, kind of give them prescribed uh, information? Not that you want to lead them a certain way, just that you want them to be sure that they are educated on on, on the, the, the um, markets that they're dealing with. So I think the main thing, especially right now, is to do to give that information uh, and make that available and transparent. And 
and give the users the power to make those decisions themselves. What we will be focusing on in the future is to try and give some tidbits of information based on their data. So whether you've performed worse after a certain investment or not, but highlight some, some of those uh, risks that you might have been taking. Uh, but it's more about setting that um, kind of transparency for our users because in that way they they are still in control and they have the the tools to do what they they would like to and linking that to the educational content uh, will like to make that kind of the decision making on their part so we're not giving advice but we're giving the the figures and, and data that they might use to make those decisions in the future yeah absolutely um, and, and given how successful your uh, users have been recently in their investments, um, I can only see having this feature will encourage them to use the app more. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that's not why you introduced the feature, because you just want to be transparent, but um, I can see off the back of that, if users are successful, they might um, see that more clearly and then be more engaged with the uh, platform. Exactly, and I think uh, the, the main goal that we're really trying to help people do is uh, invest their money into long-term investments and and stay with the products that they're investing or investments that they're 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 making and it's it's not a a, a day trader product at all that we're trying to build we're really focusing on long-term financial well-being and and understanding that and if we can you know give you accurate information on on how your portfolio is doing because of your actions that's exactly what we'll be doing and and hopefully you can get some insights that will help you make better decisions and, and understand what kind of uh, investor you are as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you've mentioned a lot um, kind of where free trade are going future wise uh, with the um, with the plus um, aspect as well um, and some detail about the different features on that. Um, so I saw recently that you had um, quite a significant uh, funding round um, and what's been the impact of that? Has that had any significance on the roadmap or, or does it just support it? So overall it supports our roadmap and our overall vision of getting everyone investing. Uh, where it will help us get to is develop features like this that allow users to have more transparency over their investments as well as control like with the limit orders as well as just ability to invest even if you don't have thousands of pounds or, or dollars to, to put into Amazon or, or any other uh, high valued stocks or high, highly priced stocks, but also gives those, um, those new beginners to the ability to put 20 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever it might be. But we are also looking at expanding across the, the, the pond to mainland uh, Europe. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we have some beta testers already in, in Ireland and Netherlands, and we'll be looking to expand that. Um, outside of the, the just the beta, beta users and, and further into mainland. Um, so geographic growth, further product, and where we really aim to be is uh, your investment tool, whatever it is that you want to invest in and manage your finances for, for uh, investing in, and long-term financial health. That's the product that we're trying to build. And, and obviously our, our community and our users are a large part of uh, building that that with us so we have a vision and we want to build the right features for our users um, across have everyone great um, well i can um, certainly see with these new improvements being made and, and the um, already great kind of ux that you've got as well as of course just the the environment that we're in at the moment does encourage it with uh, such low interest rates volatile markets um, um i can i can see that that working for you uh, so I, I really really hope that works out um, is there anything else you'd like to add um, in terms of the roadmap, um, looking forward, um, kind of features that, that are going to be released um, before we kind of wrap things up here? So on our website, we actually have a kind of a, a roadmap of, of sort so that our users understand what direction we're going towards. So, so anyone who's interested in, in the next kind of developments and areas that we're focusing on, do check out our website um, for more information. Okay, great. And, and, and in terms of uh, you, like, Individually, is there, is there any way that um, people can reach out to you? Yeah, so uh, I do ch tend to tweet, especially about free trade at uh, with at Yanni Gielonen, which is my Twitter handle, which is first name, last name, a bit of a tricky Nordic name, but uh, I'm sure you'll find me there. 
Um, well, great. Uh, thanks so much, Yanni. It's been really great chatting to you and hearing more about free trade and, and um, where they're heading. And, and it's a real pleasure to have you as our first return guest. And we hope you join us again. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And thanks you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks, Yanni. Thank you, everyone. Um, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, if you want to find out more about Pulse, you can visit us at pulse.11fs.com where all these journeys we've gone through will be hosted. Um, that's all for now and uh, see you next week. Bye guys. <laughs>